like your feedback. Hashtag C3T on Twitter. We also have a Twitter account called C3 Lingo. And we have an email address if you're still using that old medium. Hello at c3lingo.org. And our speaker, Max Beckedahl, is a hacker, activist, blogger, journalist at netzpolitik.org, won the Grimme Online Award for netzpolitik.org. And, and please, a cause I traitor, he was famously investigated for treason, uh, which was a scandal in itself that was took place and that was quickly dropped. So our favorite traitor. Good morning. I'm a bit confused now uh, because I was waiting for a certain door to close. Oh well, never mind. The good thing then is that I can tell a few more, few more things about you. Why not? Who of you was at the camp 2015 and saw the talk by Markus and Andre where they exposed or talked about the investigation they had? The translator can say he was there and he was in the booth translating that as well. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have expected that. Strong numbers here. Who saw <laughs> his first talk at Congress, whichever day it was? A few more. Well, if you're wondering why we can't start, there's a door that's locked and uh, we have to have all emergency exits open before we can start. But that is not tragic because, well, that gives us a little break and the next talk will start much later. It will be the break. So... There's no pressure, except the translator wants to get some food. Um, we were told that we can overdraw by no more than two minutes for cleaning and stuff. Let's call the lock pickers for that emergency exit. Methodically incorrect would be another way to open that door, I guess. Last night's presenters. Otherwise, we have two translations for this talk, and that has worked for a lot of talks, so the people in the cabins there, let's give them signals here. <laughs> Okay, door is open. Great. Thank you for coming. A bit unusual, perhaps three netspolitik.org talks all at the same time. I would love to be in those other ones too. Well, it's all in video, I've heard, and on in Russian as well, so later. Okay, a topic that is actually quite dry and no one much is interested, but from our point of view, it's one of the most important topics at the moment, because what I'm going to talk about has parallels in different net political debates. Privatized, net, uh, privatized law enforcement is about the trend that more and more classical law enforcement is no longer done according to a rule of law with the due process, but through private actors. And the state is sometimes even interested to pass on responsibilities and get rid of them that way to hopefully, in their point of view, let other actors solve these issues. So privatized, private laws being privately enforced is not that new, actually. Press law is one case, for example, I've been told by lawyers, but um, that the thing is that everywhere in these processes, there is a court that gets involved somewhere in between or at the end. But with privatized law enforcement, you have, enforcement, you have private actors deciding which platforms on the basis of their terms and conditions, which is probably never read, what happens on these platforms, what is allowed to happen, what is not allowed to happen. And that is quite a problem. Many will say it's not a problem for me. I'm not on Facebook. But many other people are on Facebook, for example. And that is a problem. There it it is, a it is a problem, and large parts of the public space, the public debate, is now in the hand of private actors, 
comparable to a shopping mall in a shop because a shopping mall is not the same as a marketplace on a marketplace of course you have basic rights freedom of assembly freedom of opinion you can uh, stage rallies but who of you has ever seen or staged a rally in a shopping mall successfully and Right now, we have the problem that this privatized law enforcement, which is a bit older as a concept, but now it gets dominant because private platforms get dominant. Perhaps here, many of you will say, I'm not on Facebook. We have to live with the fact that a quarter of the German population every day gets information from Facebook. And Facebook is one of the, if not the dominant platform for opinion forming. And Facebook is just 10 years old. 1.6 or 1.8 billion people are supposed to be logging in there. And Facebook is just one of many platforms that, as private actors, in effect, exercise their house rights, their conditions that perhaps you're only informed once per year when you have to accept changes. So they determine with those rules how we live. And of course, also they determine the technology that we use. So other consequential effects in public space are that there are problems when courts are more and more overrun and there is not enough competent personnel, for example, on IT questions in the courts, in prosecutor, author, prosecuting authorities. So this is something that we all should have cared about in the past, or they should have, but nothing has been done. And if you then look at voluntary corporations between private actors and states and where they come from, then there is one debate seven years ago in Germany that was very obvious, and that was Censur Zola, the Ursula von der Leyen, the then minister, wanted to have censorship against um, child abuse images and providers with a large market share. They'd come together in a voluntary cooperation with Ursula von der Leyen, the then family minister, I think, and agreed that to exchange or receive filter lists from the German criminal police office uh, and make the websites on those lists inaccessible and it's all a stop sign. So tele uh, Telecom, Vodafone, Arco, Anzenet, Telefonica, O2. Uh, we said that this was a censorship infrastructure that would no longer be under democratic control. And there was an outcry. The Pirate Party, uh, the Social Democrats even recognized that voluntary cooperation is a problem. Then they passed the access impediment law. A new coalition then came into into power, uh, conservatives and liberals, that removed the this new law. And the, party, the Pirate Party was gone a bit later too. But there was this huge debate about cooperation. Why cooperations with the private sector are bad in terms of law enforcement? why there should not be a censorship infrastructure in the private space like this. And that was good. But the problem is we are getting it back and no one's interested. Between 2009 and now, there were many attempts at the international level, particularly in the in intellectual property law, to install filters. Why the intellectual property law is a long story, lots of complications. Since I've done netspolitik.org, I have to deal with the ancient intellectual property law. It's not getting better either. But one of the few things in the last few years that have been reformed in intellectual property law was the creation, or was the industry that serves people with cease and desist orders that come with a fine immediately and, and a fee at least. And um, that's perhaps the only thing that has been improved. We had a large debate on ACTA, which had been negotiated in secret since 2008 against piracy, as it was called. So there was this debate in 2011 or 10. Uh, and the mechanism of privatized law enforcement uh, were not covered by these texts. Uh, states wanting to agree to uh, impose rules on internet service providers and platform operators to uh, install filters to solve, as it were, intellectual property issues 
to enable the law to not be reformed and everything to continue as it was. And in parallel, parallel to ACTA, at the EU level, there was a dialogue with internet providers and platform providers about illegal ups, uploads and downloads. And, and the EU Commission uh, suggested voluntary application of filters uh, and, and blocking peer-to-peer -peer traffic. The Commission then already pushed for pushed service providers to adapt their terms and conditions to give them unlimited opportunities to delete websites, uh, delete links shared to websites, links to, to websites being shared, which was a violation of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU. You have to imagine, we know in Germany, if the government introduces a law that violates the Constitution, that is bad because the government's task is to protect the Constitution, and we can, and the EU Commission also may think, well, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, who cares about that? We'll just do something else. And people were thinking, if providers do this voluntarily, then it's all right. No one can go to the courts. And that's one of the problems that privatized law enforcement carries. Another example, this dialogue about illegal up and download failed. Fortunately, ACTA failed a few years later. No one dared touch it again, at least not in terms of privatized law enforcement. But uh, a lot of things did happen, did continue to happen. Google, for example, removes about one million links every day that rights holders, intellectual property rights holders enter to Google, give Google in forms uh, an estimated 340 million removals are, ex are thought to have happened in, in the last year. Google says it takes them six hours to remove a link. So you can imagine there's a long, long check there if, if every removal request is actually justified. Um, so the list of collateral damage is a long one. Uh, many GitHub projects are legitimate videos that have some suddenly been removed because someone else thought they have the intellectual property rights. Uh, so that, again, is another form of privatized law enforcement. Google does this because Google, through the Digital Millennium and Copyright Act, the DMCA, the American copyright law, is obliged to remove within a single day in a takedown procedure, and if they don't, it will be expensive to them, and they don't want to pay that bill. Uh, so they'd rather remove too much than too little. So that's about that. Now, let's come to terror. For many years, people tried to install censorship infrastructures, child abuse images didn't work, at least in Germany it didn't, in other countries unfortunately it did. Intellect property law didn't work, ACTA failed and all that, so terror. That's where they are on a roll. In 2011, 2012, there was an, an EU project called Clean IT that even then many people, not many people cared about. It could be called the most stupid collection of suggestions for internet rules in human history, uh, as human digital rights called it at the time, and I would underline the sentence, uh, sign it immediately. and. Even then, in the Clean IT context, there was a semi-official EU project of fighting terrorism, uh, secret services in Germany, uh, together with internet providers from a few states came together to come up, to draw up joint measures to fight terrorism on the internet. And that involved, the suggestions included um, at the end of that project, which was just a big talking shop that you receive money to meet. And then there is a certain catalog that you publish at the end. And that includes suggestions such as private uh, industry standards for upload and filters and takedown and an alarm button for the internet. 
So Clean IT wasn't a master plan by the EU, but it was an upcoming or a blueprint for the upcoming EU forum, EU Internet Forum, which maybe you've never heard about, but which has a big role now. The EU Internet Forum, first the forum of the community of Internet Service Providers, uh, so it was shortened <laughs> Internet Forum, has been meeting since 2014. The first meeting that we documented was at the margins of the G6 EU Interior Ministry meeting, Germany, Italy, France and three others, and it involved the US, Canada, we didn't quite understand why, and Turkey. Um, then they spent a dinner, 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 dinner to, together in a one plus one um, meeting with Facebook and other actors um, to um, to set a direction how to deal with terror on the internet, and then it got a little bit more formal. Um, this was. There was group meeting in the first forum, and the EU sadly has uh, small pictures, uh, so you can't really see all of them. Um, the goal of that forum was not to uh, reduce freedom in the, uh, in the internet, um, but to reduce the usage for terrorism on the internet. That says pretty much everything what the goal of that task force was. There were different meetings since then, and it increased a lot. In the beginning, it was um, was to deal with the, the challenges that, that arise with terrorism using the internet, and and to find a way to react on to terrorist online reactions, um, and other and to develop other narratives and um, voluntary um, possibilities to deal um, with other things. And um, as, an, as an example, um, sorry, I missed that part. Um, and another part that um, came to it was cryptography. When you're uh, when you while you're doing terrorism, you can do cryptography cry cryptography with it. Um, then terror, what always is terror, we need a counter narrative. Um, here we have Cecilia Malmström um, that was called to the EU. She is the trading commissioner for the EU. Um, before that, she was. Um, the um, in politically um, co commissioner at uh, till 2014, uh, and she got the nickname Cecilia from censorship. Um, we were happy that the names fit, and we were happy that um, back then that censors also worked. Uh, and she um, worked for it to. Um, build a forum for all the glo global play, uh, European players in communications and so that everything that is illegal and potentially illegally can be dealt with and that, that there is an easy way to put a counter narrative into the internet that reminds us of ACTA or, or we um, prove a uh, we run a successful campaign against ACTA and then the EU uh, Commission starts a narrative against uh, for ACTA um, so um, it is a way for the EU Commission to uh, build a counter narrative against things they, they don't want and that's where Afra Monopoulos comes in um, Minister for in, um, Inners um, for Interior and Migration um, and he also mentions Europol and uh, Europol is the European Police Force 
like the BKA on um, a, a EU level, um, and they had the nice idea. Um, um, we were talking about um, ter ter terrorism things, but now we can increase it to migration and other other things, um, like against traffickers. Um, and there were instantly th three um, three for, uh, task forces uh, that should should destroy um, migration trafficking uh, human trafficking rings. So. Uh, typical pattern. Um, we're talking about uh, about terror. Everybody is looking at the, at ISIS, and then we um, and when we're making progress, um, so somebody comes in and adds another topic on on top of it. Um, and with the Internet Forum that w was founded officially in 2015. Uh, and they invited five internet co companies and we were wondering how did this ask.fm gets on, on this list we really don't know, I don't know um, prob pr probably we didn't really care about it um, they apparently have 160 million users we don't know if they're active um, and we're thinking about um, there, there could there could be um, 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 they, they wanted to invite Apple but then somehow ended up asking ask us, but we don't know um, when the forum was founded uh, we want three things first we want to fight terrorism propaganda on the internet and can be put into place and another problem is to um, to to um, and to speak about the prob uh, problems that law enforcement have with cryptography and how how we can put interface in between to um, uh, to how we can have surveillance interfaces. Um, we uh, we don't want to. So um, the interior minister says we can't and don't want to enforce enforce laws or introduce laws about contents that can or cannot be shown by providers, but we appeal to the humanitarian responsibility, the ethical responsibility uh, for those to take some certain content out if com if governments ask for that, for that why that does what could possibly go wrong so if this works with child abuse images why could it not be used with terrorism and then companies start to define in their terms and conditions what and what is not acceptable and so they start to become the judge and, and jury and the executioner and and delete content Europol as we said joined this and had the great idea to install a reporting a, re a referral unit for un unpalatable internet content. internet content. Of course, what is unpalatable palatable is always a question of perspective, and uh, this referral unit was then placed at the anti-terror unit, and it be suddenly became a center for blocking and deleting unwanted internet content, as a commission document uh, showed. Europol is supposed to help member states by identifying and removing uh, certain content. And so we have a situation where every one or two months behind closed doors these large platforms meet with the EU Commission and various things are on the table and, well, the thing is, it's probably a kind of backroom deal behind closed doors, horse trading. So, if you have things like you have certain monitoring inter surveillance interfaces you don't like and you want to keep up with, uh, keep using cryptography, you'll have to offer something else. So, for a while we have been trying, oh, only 10 minutes left. Okay, for a while we've been trying to get information on this using freedom of information law, EU law, and that was rejected because releasing public publicly details about the engagement and cooperation with industry results in these industry representatives 
potentially becoming subjects to threats by terrorists. So the EU Commission is referring to this because Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter are deleting many IS accounts, which on leads to Mark Zuckerberg receiving death threats on Twitter. And that's, this is why we cannot know what the EU Internet Forum is doing. Not a joke. You can read up on this. So we didn't find it very funny. And when we were told, sorry, we can't tell you what's happening, we have to be concerned for the security safety of the negotiation partners and to support the argument, then the EU Commission would Twitter lavish pictures of everyone involved at the negotiation table. That's a smaller one. If you click on it, you see the whole thing. And the ombudsperson of the EU has started a procedure uh, initiated by edu.org, who sometimes uh, publish articles at nespolitik.org, and calling this a huge scam, and it was their right to inf freedom of information, and the ombudsperson is investigating. And in parallel this year, our interior minister started to put on the pressure. He told a morning TV program, we are in intensive talks with providers, uh, bomb building manuals uh, should disappear from the internet and well the people that call for freedom of expression uh, I don't find these people convincing we want providers to themselves be liable if crimes happen in their networks right so you could translate this by saying what the interior minister said uh, in the morning magazine there we Translated, it's, that's a beautiful platform you have there. Wouldn't it be sad if you had to be liable for your users' contents? And that brings us back to the horse trading. If you have pressures on platforms to start doing things, because otherwise we will uh, look at the exclusion from liability, which the EU is trying to do, the protections that the platform providers have, so uh, about the whole privatized law enforcement thing, terror thing, and all that. So um, all these problems uh, were good arguments that, that had results in the last few months. For a few months now, we have upload filters. We call them censorship filters. The Facebook, Twitter, YouTube uh, platforms have those filters, and that gets us to the photo DNA technology, a Microsoft and Facebook project. Uh, back then in the child abuse image debate, we were aware of this. It, it assigns a hash value to image and puts and puts it into databases and compares these. So the large platforms, quite unnoticed by the public, have installed these filters and they receive blocking lists from the censorship database and all the images that are uploaded are checked against that list, that database, and if they're in it, uh, that database is uh, fed by police authorities. What could possibly go wrong? The providers also agree to put everything into the database that are most probably uh, violating terms and conditions by all these platforms. If you look at those community standards, you can imagine, you can think, well, that's, this more or less covers everything or forbids everything that could happen. Problem also is no one is controlling what is on those filter lists. No one really cares. All right, so that's one thing. And uh, what we tried at Censorsula, the censorship debate uh, at the German level, we now have installed this very month on all these platforms. And then we have the problem, Monika Hohlmeier, the, an, an, an EU parliamentarian from the Conservatives from Bavaria, daughter of previous uh, Bavarian Prime Minister Franz Josef Strauss. She is the rapporteur on the, the terror directive, a directive uh, that is fast-tracked, of course, terrorism, you know, uh, more or less behind closed doors. And she also had the idea of installing censorship infrastructures uh, at the DNS level. And if we, if we, by looking at the draft that we saw and commenting on it, we could prevent this. And now, in addition, there are words about member states being able to decide themselves whether to install censorship or not. But one, the main problem, or one of the main problems with the terror directive that, again, no one is looking at and that has to be implemented in the next few months, there is a definition in there what terrorism actually is. 
And you can imagine that's all fairly relative, right? Uh, for us, the Islamic State clearly is terror. China would call the Dalai Lama clearly terrorist, uh, that the one that we give awards to, you know. And the other problem then is, from our point of view, certain forms of civil disobedience or actions such as occupy, occupying uh, a coal field are, uh, could be called terrorism and illegal system interference is another item. Online protests, perhaps the payback operation by Anonymous against Visa Card and MasterCard with DDoS attacks, which from our point of view could be called a Political, political demonstration on the internet. Had it been registered with the authorities at a demonstration, it would have probably been possible, but this was not limited to Germany, of course, where registration would happen. So that could be called terrorism and upload filters and filters could be used against that as well. And also the, the document that defines terrorism is often, often talks about provocation. That's, that again is an interesting question. Every favor posting, could that be a public provocation? Favor, very known blogger in the hacker scene in Germany. Um, okay, I'll have to rush things a bit. Uh, at the end of the year, there was a behavioral codex to fight hate speech. Uh, at the time, fake news uh, was an issue already, and uh, uh, so they were thinking about fighting fake news, bringing counter-narratives. Uh, of course, we think of things like Postilion, the uh, satire magazine. Others may think of the consumer protection minister from the Green Party, Renate Kuhnhurst, not the current one. She was the uh, consumer protection minister until 2005, I think. And then we have Günther, who we sent to Europe to solve the internet problem. Günther Oettinger, who's now, who was the commissioner on the digital uh, agenda. And he tried to reform copyright and managed to uh, publish an even worse draft that makes things even worse, which hardly anyone thought possible. Among other things, it's about compelling all platforms, not just the large ones, to install upload filters and look through everything that was uploaded and checking whether it's compatible with intellectual property law and n whether no one has rights on it. And uh, this all is linked to the, or uh, modeled on the YouTube content ID. And the thing is that these photo, this is, this applies the photo image, the photo data on images, but also it applies to Wikipedia. Imagine Wikipedia having to check each upload whether intellectual property is, could be violated. What could possibly go wrong? All right. So Günter Oettinger, has been, well, he has been removed, uh, well, but the, his draft is still there, and we have the next things on the agenda, TISA, the Trade and Services Agreement, uh, we leaked it together with Greenpeace, and uh, thankfully they pr projected our logo onto a nuclear power station, not something we have every day. So TISA is a trade agreement on services, including 23 states and the EU and the US, just shortly before the end, suggested to define interactive computer services and according to the definition that's all platforms on which more than one user at the same time can access certain content and those services and their users should no longer have to justify uh, the platform should no longer justify what uh, content they delete if they haven't created them themselves so if this is all voluntary cooperation and these platforms start to voluntarily delete all this, they can no longer be held uh, liable for, for those removals. <clears throat> Cannot be held responsible if they consider these contents simply damaging or offensive. You can imagine Facebook with their moral values, what they delete, you know, female nipples forbidden, male nipples allowed, you know. So it all looks pretty bad. And that's how it is. We are expecting up to 10 
different EU legislative processes in the next year. The EU Privacy Directive, the copyright reform, platform regulation that deserve need much more attention. We need counter-narratives to stay in the language of the EU Commission. The answers that we have are important, how we can do without upload filters. We were able to turn the debate around by presenting alternatives to blocking in the child abuse image debate, and we need similar arguments when it comes, about, when it comes to the Islamic State. Of course, we cannot uh, present, present solutions to everything, including fake news and all that, so we need more people to join thinking critically and think up alternatives. Don't give up. We have the big challenge that in times of democracies becoming more and more unstable, we have huge censorship control apparatuses being installed in parallel, and we are the ones that have to say what could possibly go wrong. We have to fight against this. We do this at netspritik.org. If you want to support us, we're looking for your donations, recurrent donations too. I have to stop. Doors will be open soon. Thank you for listening. Fight for your digital rights. Get involved. Get others involved. Thanks and have fun at the Congress. Yeah, and thanks for listening. Uh, your translators were Sebalis and Script Kitty. And please give us feedback. Hashtag C3T. Twitter uh, account C3Lingo. Email hello at C3Lingo, C3Lingo.org. Signal Angel, question from the internet. Apparently, no. not a question. <laughs> okay, no questions. Um, thanks a lot.